I'm Christy and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm here with a fantasy romance vlog. So I'm actually filming this clip after I've already done this vlog, which I realized I never had like an actual intro to it. So I had to come back and do this when I was editing the final video. So my friend Carrie from Booked for Romance, she invited me to do this fantasy romance vlog with her where we picked out two fantasy romances to read on both of our TBRs and we were both gonna read them and then see how we feel like in these vlogs, which I'm so glad Carrie invited me to do this with her. It's so much fun and I love it. We actually got to meet last year in October at the Love in Vegas book signing and of course Las Vegas, which was so much fun because we had been friends online like through Instagram longer than YouTube, of course. But yeah, we had been friends for I think like three years or so now. So it was so fun to find meet her in person last year. I'm going to see her at book signings again this year. And yeah, she's just a great book friend. And so this was so much fun. And I'm so glad she invited me to do this with her. So we picked out two books that were on both of our TBRs. She's like, let's just go through our want to read shelves on Goodreads and see what we have in common. So we picked Praying for Rain by B.B. Easton, as well as Between Wrath and Mercy from Jess Wise Cup. So that's all really I wanted to open up and introduce the vlog with. So you're going to see my thoughts on both books as I read them. And then of course, I will link Carrie's video and her channel in the description of this one. So you can go check out her thoughts on these books as well. So yeah, without further ado, we'll get into the books. All right, so I'm just here to quickly check in. It is actually February 4th, so it's the weekend before my family and I end up going on our Hawaii vacation. And so I have been getting a start on my February reads. We're gonna be gone for quite a bit of February. I wanted to get a start on my reads for the month. And so I'm already starting on Praying for Rain by B.B. Easton, which I am reading with Carrie from Book for Romance. So, so excited we're doing this vlog together. We're reading two books. And so this is the first one that I started. I do have the audio out, so I grabbed it from Hoopla. But I knew before going in that this one is a post-apocalyptic, kind of like dystopian setup. It's been on my TBR for years. And so I'm so excited that we picked it to get to for this vlog. And it must be a pretty short one because I'm already 30% in and I've only been listening for two hours worth of the audio time. So far, it's super interesting. I am enjoying it so far. I have only read one B.B. Easton book in the past, and that was just last year, which was The Devil of Dublin, which I really enjoyed, which is like a whole different type of genre. But I do, of course, I have always loved dystopian and like post-apocalyptic reads, and so I'm so excited to get to this one. Basically, in this, so far, we are following the character Rain, which her name is Rainbow, but she goes by Rain. And she lives in this small town in Georgia, and we find out that the world is going to be ending. Like, everybody knows this prediction is going to be happening in three days' time, and so we're kind of like in the countdown to the last days on Earth. And so Rain's character is kind of interesting because instead of like being afraid or worrying or doing like all these chaotic crazy things like she's actually kind of looking forward to everything ending and dying so that's interesting. Basically it seems like everybody knows the world is ending like the whole place is just in chaos so there are like abandoned houses, uh, people have abandoned their jobs and businesses, like there's abandoned cars on the road and people are just like looting, kind of just doing like whatever they want because it's the end of days so to speak. So she did just meet the hero Wes and he is somebody who he talks about how like people have always used him like he was in the foster care system and he felt like his foster parents used him for money. His like friends and people in high school used him for different reasons you know and so he's an interesting character and so he has decided to kind of stick with Rain which at first he was going to just use her for a bit and then now he's like she could become like useful for like survival and resources so they are kind of paired up together and spending time together but we will see where it goes from here. Both of the characters as well they're having like these I don't know if they're like dreams or nightmares or visions of like things that could happen in the future or something like that we'll see if something comes of that as well so that's all I have so far like I mentioned we are just in the weekend before our trip and so I'm just like doing audios while I am packing and getting like last minute things done at home before our trip I'll probably finish this one out tonight just because it is a shorter audio and then you won't hear from me again in this vlog until probably the end of the month once we're back and I do the second book that we're reading which is Between Wrath and Mercy by Jess Wisecup. So yeah I will check in later once I have finished uh, Praying for Rain or stop to have some
It is Sunday and so I am just out running some errands. I just grabbed some iced coffee. So my coffee order is an iced white mocha. I get it with light ice. I get it half sweet and I add peppermint. Sometimes I add vanilla, but today I was feeling peppermint. So anyways, it is really windy too. So if you hear that in the background, that is what is going on. <laughs> So yeah, I did finish praying for rain last night by BB Easton and I have some mixed feelings about this one. I think I'm going to end up giving it three stars, which I haven't rated it yet because I know Carrie wants to guess like in her vlog of what she thinks I'm going to think of the book. So I told her, I was like, hey, I finished one of the books we're reading and I'm going to mark it as read on Goodreads, but like I'm not leaving my rating. I'm not putting a review slow. Like she won't know what I thought of it until later. <laughs> so... So yeah, I fully expected to go into this book and absolutely love it. I expected I was going to go on a binge of the entire trilogy. It had been on my TBR for years, like I mentioned. And yeah, I just have like some mixed feelings about it now. And I'm not even sure if I'm going to continue, honestly, because like I didn't love it. I didn't like it very much. So basically, this is a pre-apocalyptic setting with the characters like in the three days before the like predicted apocalypse is supposed to happen on Earth. So like that was an interesting and kind of like unique premise for a book because mostly I read post-apocalyptic. They're not really like the pre-apocalypse. So that was an interesting twist to the story. But yeah, I kind of feel like the relationship between Rain and Wes was just like a little bit insta-lovey for me. Like I really didn't feel their connection, which both these characters, we learn about them and we see their backstories. They both have like tragedies in their past. And so I found it a little unbelievable that they were so willing to trust one another and like be in love with one another after just a few days or like a day. It's been a day. Like, yeah, so I'm not sure. So there was that going on. It also just felt very YA, which I guess I'm assuming they're like teenagers ish, like older teenagers, I think. I don't know if it ever said specifically, but I know for sure like he was out of high school and she talked about like college days one day like yeah it just felt kind of YA I guess like new adults technically but like they're in an adult setting like the conversations are actually you know obviously adult so I don't know it just felt kind of weird like the characters felt a little juvenile and so yeah I don't know and so like I had mentioned they had met up the hero actually like saved her rescued her during this little moment when she was about to be attacked and then he decided to he was going to use her like for resources and survival and all of that and then after a while he's like well I'll just keep her around longer and like they start to fall for one another and all of that and so that's happening they decide to travel together more like he pushes it for her because she's just like I'm fine with dying like I'm just waiting counting the days down until the end so he's the one who wants to survive and so he's like well I know about this like bomb shelter and so they go on this like trek or a little like road trip together to go and find this bomb shelter that he knows about. So like I had mentioned in my previous update like there's always these like visions of things that would be happening and it kind of just threw me out like I was listening to the audio and so all of a sudden we would switch to like these visions or nightmares or dreams the characters are seeing and it left me like a little jarred and kind of confused because for a bit during the audio I'd be like wait what like what's happening what did I miss and then I'd realize okay no wait like this is one of those visions or like nightmares that they're having again where they're seeing like these other things happening and like they're seeing the four horsemen and they're kind of seeing like things that could happen or will happen like I wasn't really sure what was going on earlier into the read so we do find out more about that it comes into play which not sure how I feel about the reveal of all of that situation at the end I guess it made it a little more interesting because I enjoyed that part more than the romance aspect of the book but yeah, like I'm not sure where it's going. I'd have to go into spoilers to kind of talk about what happened at the end, which I will throw up like the little spoiler tag when I'm going to talk about that because I feel like you have to for this book. <laughs> yeah, I just didn't love the characters as much as I was expecting. Didn't really love the story as much as I was expecting either. So there's that. So yeah, I gave it three stars and now I will get into the spoiler section of this. So I'll throw up a little spoiler tag here. So basically those visions and nightmares and dreams that they were seeing, the hero Wes at the end, he realizes that it's kind of like this propaganda type of situation, like through social media, through billboards, through TV and commercials and things like that on Instagram, like all of these different ways that there was like subliminal messages happening about this like date, April 23rd and like the end of days, like he saw it flash across the screen a few times with like a banner. And so he realized that like, somebody whoever I'm assuming like the government like I don't know but they kind of like brainwashed people so to speak or put these images of an apocalypse happening those were like what the visions were of what they start seeing and so it kind of started making people go nuts and like start doing all of these crazy things so it seems like the whole apocalypse is a hoax I'm assuming this has to do with like some government situation of trying to control populations or cut certain people out like yeah, I'm not sure where it's going to go. Like I said, I don't even know if I'll continue because I wasn't really a fan of anything else in the story. So yeah, there was that little bit, which was 
an interesting twist, I guess. <laughs> So after I had finished, I was actually telling my husband about the book and like how the ending went and all of that. And so he actually was telling me because he reads as well too. And he was saying that it reminded him of a series that he has read in the past. And so I was like, hmm, interesting. Like, I don't feel like the premise or the plot now was that unique, like as far as how the ending went. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> all right. So finish with the spoiler section. But yeah, so I mean, I gave it three stars like it was okay it was fine it was a really quick read I think it was like a five six hour audio listen yeah that was my first book for Carrie and I that we are reading I'm so curious to see her thoughts on this one yeah, I don't think I will continue on just because I didn't love it from where it left off here and wasn't a fan of the couple or the characters so like I don't know if you finished the whole trilogy let me know if it was worth it if I feel like this already after book one so like I said today is Sunday it's February 5th and I'm so excited to get out of this state tomorrow we go on our Hawaii trip and it's just going to be such a good time to get out of the snow and frozen ground and the freezing temperatures and just go just enjoy an island you know vacation yeah, it'll be quite a bit of wait between the vlog of when I check in again next. Like, not for you, but for me, it will be a while until I check in again when I read Between Wrath and Mercy by Jess Wise Cup. Be probably in a week or so, which to you, I mean, it's going to be in the next clip. But yeah, until then, I will check. Here to check in. I am literally the worst vlogger in the world because I have already finished the next book I'm going to talk about. I actually finished it last week and I did zero updates like at all. So we did our Hawaii trip with my family which was so much fun like my husband and our daughter who was 10. We went to Maui. We were there for 10 11 days like had the best time ever like I'm so wishing I was back there right now as I look outside here right now it is snowy and like single digits and there it was just like perfect weather like the absolute perfect fresh fruit like just ugh, all the amazing things like amazing views like so chill and relaxed there like I loved it there so much and so like yeah Maui was just like the perfect time which I will maybe insert like a little bit of clips here just to like break up this vlog because I don't have a whole ton to show or talk about like I did nothing else so yeah I'll put like a little bit of Maui moments in here which you probably already saw like before this clip just to like break it up since the first book for this vlog I read at the beginning of the month and it is now the end of February so just to like check in. So you've probably already seen some of my like Maui moments and things like that which I'm gonna have a whole like actual video moments thingy coming up on my channel if you do want to see like more of our Maui adventures because it was a lot of fun. So I'm actually here to chat about Between Wrath and Mercy by Jess Wisecup which was the second book that Carrie and I picked to read and chat about in our vlogs together. So actually today is February 25th and I finished and read this book last weekend. So February 18th, um, 19th is when I finished this book. So yeah, and I did zero updates like at all. So I don't know about other people, but like when I get back from a vacation or a trip where like I wasn't having to do real life, like, you know, responsibilities and stuff or like do videos and things like that, like I just want to chill for a bit. And so like I wasn't really ready to get back into videos or like updating my experience with the book. Yeah, when I got back, I was just kind of like in the mood to just read. And like this book I loved, like I gave it five stars. I love this book, by the way. Loved it so much. Like it was so good. It was everything I wanted in an adult fantasy romance. Like it hit all the marks, which I will talk about like more of that in a bit. But yeah, like when I was reading it, I was just like, sometimes I get in the mood with certain books where like, I don't really want to like talk about it or get out of it to like do video updates. Like I just want to be with the book, be in the moment and just like loving and enjoying it. Like my friend Jen from Jen Book Magpie, which I talk to her like every single day. And so her and I were always like on the same wavelength with books. And so her and I were reading it at the same time. And so it was really fun to chat with her like as I was reading, just because you have that like instant immediate person who's going to like respond back to you like of the same moments and things like that. So that was really fun to do. But like as far as like sitting down or breaking from my book to then come jump on a video, like I just wasn't in, I don't know, like the headspace or like didn't want to do that at the time. 
So like that's why I gave no updates, which I know is terrible for like a vlog where I'm supposed to be chatting about <laughs> these two books. So yeah, but like we're here a week later and now I will tell you like some of my thoughts because I do take notes like on all the books that I read. That's how I like I do my reviews at the end after I'm done reading them. Like I'll go through my notes and things like that and just have it like, you know, like what I was thinking as I went which hopefully this is all making sense. I feel like I'm all over the place. This is like the first time I'm doing a video and like chatting about anything in probably like three weeks, like since before we went on our trip, because I had like pre-filmed a bunch of stuff and like have had that to post over the two weeks that we were gone on our trip. And so like, yeah, I haven't like sat down and talked or like formed thoughts for videos in quite a long time. So hopefully this is making sense and you're still with me. I feel like I've said nothing yet. We're five minutes in, so we'll see. <laughs> All right, so basically this book, Between Wrath and Mercy, this one came out last year and it has been on my TBR since last year, like January, February when it came out of 2022. Like it's been on my TBR since then and I'm so glad I finally got to it because I loved it so, so much. I'm also glad I read it once book two was out because it leaves on a massive cliffhanger. So being able to jump into book two, which I already did that too, like I've already read that book as well, but we're only here to talk about book one. <laughs> So what I loved about this book, it is a adult fantasy romance where the characters, the main characters are older, which I absolutely loved. They're like in their mid thirties. The heroine is actually a mother to a teenage daughter, which I feel like I have never read in a fantasy romance, like with the heroine already being a mom to a child. Like, I feel like I've never seen that, which I loved. I loved it so much. Like I'm a mom, I'm in my mid thirties. Like I totally connected to these characters and I love seeing older characters represented in all aspects of you know romances so especially like in a fantasy romance it was so much fun so this book it actually starts off with a prologue with where we meet our heroine emma and her twin sister who actually is the beloved in their world which like she's you know prophesized there's like a whole prophecy situation going on and like all these things she's supposed to do and so we see the two sisters together like her twin sister was actually betrothed to this prince of the kingdom and things like that um like an arranged marriage just because because of her like abilities and powers so to speak and so then we cut to 16 years later and we see that her sister actually died shortly after that so when they were teenagers like 17 18 like her twin sister died and so now we are with emma and she has left like the kingdom behind she is so not into like the whole prophecy thing with her sister and so she left behind that world and she is now married and living with her husband and their 15 year old daughter. And we see that Emma is actually super afraid for their daughter because her daughter has a lot of the like attributes and things that her twin sister had that like the people, you know, named her as the beloved or like this prophesized person. And so she's like very protective of her daughter. And that's why she doesn't want to be around the kingdom and kind of their like religious type setup. And so she has kind of been living like off the grid with her husband and their daughter and like just trying to protect her from the world like doesn't let her daughter go out she doesn't want people to see her daughter because she has like white hair and like I think like glowing silver or white eyes and so she, like she doesn't want anybody to like put the pieces together and realize like who her daughter is. So it starts off like that with her being very protective of her daughter and then as the story goes on like very early on which it's even on the synopsis like her daughter gets kidnapped and so it turns into Emma like going very mama bear <laughs> trying to find her daughter and get her back and that is basically how the story starts and so along the way Emma gets involved with the people like her friends who she hasn't seen in 16 years and kind of like pulled away from which one of those is the hero he is Prince Rainier he goes by Rain and so he was actually her twin sister sisters betrothed in the past but Emma and Rain had like a little moment back when they were teens and so it is a second chance romance which I absolutely love and like ugh, the tension and like the swooniness from Rainier that we get in this like early on to the book just like the moments that he does for her like you know gives her little like things that he knows she collects like she collects seashells so he brings her some and is like you know do you still collect these like I've been finding them for you and just like really sweet moments like he finds her daughter's locket at one point and like the clasp has been broken and so he like fixes it for her and you know she sees it the next day so just like all those little moments like I was already swooning for before like we even got to a romance between them. I really loved the magic and fantasy elements in this book as well as well as like the magic and the lore and some of the like prophecies things that are happening like were super interesting to me in the world building on top of that like the second chance romance was just like chef's kiss slow burn like it was ugh, just tension filled and I loved it so much 
And I did like in this too how the hero he's kind of like mad and like rightfully so at the heroine when the story picks up because he hasn't seen her or talked to her in 16 years like he didn't even know where she was and she kind of like ghosted him and their group of friends which is also his sister and then like his second in command is like their little like friend group so there's four of them and so like they're all kind of mad at her because when that happened in the past and her sister died she just like left like obviously she was feeling the trauma and like she left for good reasons like she had her own trauma going on but the rest of them were like you know we were going through it too and like we lost our best friend this you know her sister as well as like we lost you at the same time so like we're kind of mad at you still so like they have all of that going on and like the complexities of their relationships were super interesting like i loved how all of them like all four of the main characters we follow like we get to see all of them kind of delve through those sticky kind of like situations and relationships they have with her like they have hurts from the past that they want to get off their chests and like they're just like adults with like actual feelings and complexities to them like I don't know how else to describe it but like it was so well done and I was just like here for it like you could just connect and feel for all these characters because like they all have issues and like they've all lived lives in between seeing one another again and so they have you know things that they want to work through and like they tell her off sometimes but like the hero is like so super protective of her like even though he's pissed at her like he is so caring and so protective and like ugh, it's just so good <laughs> And that was one thing I really liked is how all of the characters have made choices, they made mistakes, they made bad choices, like they have flaws, right? And so I just loved seeing that explored within their like friend group. And of course, within the relationship between the hero and the heroine as well, like just love to see it. So yeah, I just absolutely loved it so much. I can't wait to get a physical copy of this one, which actually I have like a bookish box subscription. And I know that for December, that was the book that they're doing. And so I cannot wait to get my copy in because I just like want that book on my shelves already because I love it so much which yeah I mean it does leave on a really big cliffhanger and so you're definitely going to want to jump into book two which thankfully the second book between despair and hope I think it's called yeah it's already out so like you can read it which I did already finish that one as well because like I had jump into it and so yeah just kind of like continues the story from there but I won't talk about it too much but yeah this first book absolutely loved it so much five stars like it was such a great book and I'm so glad that Carrie and I decided to read this for our vlog together so all in all I would say it was a pretty good vlog like Carrie and I read some books that had been on my TBR one of which for a year and then the first book like that's been on my TBR for years and years and so I'm glad to have finally got to both which obviously between Wrath and Mercy I loved way more. I gave that one five stars. And then the Praying for Rain I gave three stars. It was probably like more two and a half stars now that I have thought about it more. Won't be continuing that series. Did not enjoy that, which I mean, you've already seen my thoughts for that one. Which it's also funny that both characters in this books that we read have a Rain character because in Praying for Rain, it was the heroine Rainbow Rain. And then in this Between Wrath and Mercy, it was the hero Prince Rainier or Rain. <laughs> so that was actually a super funny coincidence that like we didn't realize before we decided to pick both of these books. <laughs> So yeah, this was just such a fun time and thank you so much again to Carrie for reaching out to me and wanting to do this vlog together. I had such a fun time, even though I'm the worst vlogger in the world and like never updated on the second book, like it is what it is. <laughs> So yeah, this was so fun. I can't wait to go watch her vlog and see what she thought. Her and I have already talked about sort of between Wrath and Mercy, like since we've already both finished it. And so we did chat a little bit. I didn't tell her too much of my thoughts because I know she wanted to guess in her vlog, like what I thought. So I didn't tell her much at all. And yeah, so we did talk about it a little bit. So I know kind of what she thought about some of the books, but I can't wait to go watch her vlog after this and see all of her thoughts, like as she was reading, because I'm sure she did like way better than me and updated like all the time with her books. So yeah. So I of course have her linked in the description of this video so you can check out her channel and her video. So yeah, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching this. Hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, let me know in the comments if you've read either of these books, what you thought. If you think Praying for Rain gets better as the series goes on, let me know that too. If you've read Between Wrath and Mercy and loved it as much as I did, let me know that. And yeah, I'm so glad we got to these. It was such a fun time. I've read like a bunch of fantasy romances for February and have had just a fun time doing that. I'm definitely in a fantasy romance mood. So if you have one that I should read, let me know that too. I'd love to know. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future videos and I'll see you in my next one.